So obviously we're not on steroids, we're really talking about off steroids. Uh, to give you an idea about OPANS and where we fit in standard pharmaceutical pipeline, uh, we are CR, and local CRO, and we're focused uh, beginning on screening with this characterization of compound collections. And we use this four detector hyphenated system, which gives us some unique capabilities for anybody who wants to know uh, how to quantify without reference standards. But we also do a lot of uh, labelless screenings, again, to be defined by something we're not, uh, to go off of earlier detections uh, earlier today. So we uh, do screens without labels. Uh, standard ADME, in vitro ADME work, all the standard stuff, and, and bioanalytical for early discovery, as well as uh, GLP bioanalytical and dose formulation analysis. Uh, but what we're going to talk about today are really our combination between biomarkers, uh, meaning something that we're measuring, uh, an endogenous analyte, and how we use that across the board, including in uh, clinical applications. So with that, why do we care about steroid analysis? Uh, we have customers from a variety of areas, beginning with this EPA Endocrine Disruptor Program. And although we, all we talk about is, uh, sounds like pharma here, the first word in this conference is chemical. And if you're in the chemical industry, you understand what this means with the Endocrine Disruptor Program. Uh, with the example of bisphenol A and the fact that every chemical that's made is going to be tested uh, by EPA mandate uh, for endocrine disruption. Additionally, in, in pharmaceutical world, we worry about it in terms of uh, cancer that's mediated by estrogen or testosterone-mediated cancer, uh, of course, antifungals, and then we call it endocrinology for a reason. So now that none of you can actually read this slide, I didn't realize how small it was going to be. Uh, this is the standard pathway, and we're going to talk about ketoconazole. And I didn't see if Mike walked back in, because if he did, I wanted him to tell me which of these were the green ones and which ones were the red ones. Uh, but with that, we've developed in vitro assays uh, for all of these. And so we run, uh, can characterize the potency uh, of your compound. And we're using ketoconazole as an example here uh, against all of this. And so not only do we have in vitro assays in the sense of uh, enzyme assays, but we also have cellular assays. So the H295R cell line is used to model uh, steroidogenesis. And again, this is a bit difficult to show. I'm sorry about the size. But if we take a look at what ketoconazole does, which ketoconazole blocks 17, uh, CYP17, and then there you have the hydroxylase and the lyase. And what happens is the first things that drop down, if we look here, are these orange, which correspond to androstene down and testosterone which fall here and here on the pathway. So the, so the CYP17 lyase has been blocked. The next thing you see come down uh, in terms of uh, activity is coming across to the 11-deoxycortisol, uh, which is here. And then you'll see that the corticosterone gets pushed down. And all at the same time, while those things are getting pushed down, you're, you're shoving your steroid production up into to DOC, which then eventually, as you get high enough on the concentration range shoves you back to break uh, progesterone. So that's what all these little curves here mean and that help you understand what is happening when you take this antifungal drug. Uh, and so the key is how do you develop a drug? You want to stop this progesterone rise relative to the push on the testosterone. So you want to shove these down and keep this down without moving up and that gives you the right kind of selectivity. Uh, so we have all, not just the in vitro models to do this, but also the in vivo models. Uh, so we, we look at this out of plasma and everything else. Thank you. <laughs>